My name is John and I'm talking to you from Vancouver, Canada. This is my entry in the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest 2nd Edition. Oh, you're looking at my workshop and going, it looks like a kitchen. Well, actually, it is a kitchen. I'm going to do all my modeling on the kitchen counter, with the exception of the spray painting, which I take outdoors. Now that brings up another subject. I don't actually own an airbrush. So the spray painting is going to be the good old rattle can. And yes, you can get a decent finish using it if you know what you're doing and are careful. I've chosen to model an Alberta government grain car. The government bought a thousand of these grain cars in the 1980s to help with the car shortage that was facing Canadian railroads at the time. All in all, there were about 18,000 cars built, uh, mostly for the government of Canada but the governments of Alberta and Saskatchewan each contributed fleets of a thousand cars. The Alberta cars are instantly recognizable by the large logo on the side. Many of the cars were used to promote tourism throughout Alberta with the slogan, Take an Alberta Break, and the name of a small or large community on the car side. This is probably the closest you can come to a fleet of freight cars with names as well as numbers. The car I have chosen to model bears the name of Fort Saskatchewan, a city of 25,000 people near Edmonton. The car is in an advanced state of paint failure, so it should present some interesting modeling challenges. Now it's time to get started. The basis of my model is a Walther's four bay covered hopper. I actually bought a car already painted in the original 1980s Alberta Heritage Fund paint scheme, but we are going to totally obliterate the factory paint as you will see. The first thing I like to do is remove the trucks and couplers from the car. These are put aside for painting and will be added back to the car when the project is completed. Of course I'll put KDs on instead of the factory couplers. To safely handle a car during weathering, I like to attach it to a household paint stir stick. Holes are drilled at the same spacing as the truck centers and long 256 screws are used to attach the body. Now the car can be handled without risk of fingerprints or smudges spoiling the work. Spray paint performs best when it is warm. Just take some hot tap water and immerse the can for 15 minutes. The improvement in performance is notable. So, <clears throat> welcome to my outdoor spray booth. Uh, this weather wasn't supposed to happen. Normally we'd be enjoying crocuses, cherry blossoms and fine weather at this time of year but uh, it got cold and then it snowed. That's not going to stop me, uh, especially as I've got a deadline to meet. I do all my uh, spray painting outdoors. I don't like the environmental effect of spraying indoors and I don't have a spray booth along with all the other equipment I don't have. When I am painting a model, I just use this, which is a soda pop flat, 32 cans of Coke. Use that to catch the overspray, do it on my back porch, and uh, it works fine. There's only two caveats. One is the paint has to be warm, two, the model has to be warm. And preferably it shouldn't be raining. So let's have a go. I've already done one coat on the uh, car in gray primer. It's now time to do another coat in uh, the yellow undercoat that I'm gonna use to warm up the paint. Oh. 
Okay, here we are. Snow's stopped. It's actually thawing really quickly, so we have to work uh, quickly and get the model back inside because uh, there's a big tree over us and it's dropping snow all over the place. The car's ready to go. It's got two coats of this sort of cream undercoat. We have some hot pink that we're going to apply to represent the uh, undercoat which is showing through the blue paint on the model. We only need to apply it to the tank sides and uh, the roof walk. Then we're going to over cover this with blue paint. So here we go. That's it. That's all we need. Now it's time to do some actual weathering work on the car. Everything we've done up to this point has been preparation for this moment. We're going to use a product called Maskol from Humbrol. It's similar to other masking products that you can obtain in your local hobby shop. It's a goopy mess, sort of bubblegum color, and it's used to retain the base color, which is going to be painted over in a totally contrasting color on the model. Using the computer, I have made a one-to-one -one template based upon a photograph of the actual car we're modeling. This will be useful in applying the mask uh, to retain the pinkish-orange uh, undercoat color. This is an acrylic product that is painted onto the model, covering over the areas that you want to keep with the underlying color. It's used a lot by military modelers to apply camouflage paint. In our case, we're going to cover the tank sides towards the top, which is where the undercoat is showing through on the prototype photos. The product can be diluted in water, and experience has shown that a little bit of water added to the product makes it flow better. Here's what one side of the car looks like with the wet mask all on it. And here's what it looks like after it's dried a bit. It looks really horrible, but don't worry. And here's what the car looks like after having received a spray of blue paint, which is the final base color for the car. Well, now it's time for the moment of truth. I've applied two coats of uh, blue paint. First, a darker blue, and uh, later this so-called French blue, which is lighter than the prototype color would be, but that is going to simulate fading. We have now to remove the Humbrol mask all that is underneath, and hopefully it will reveal the uh, undercoat. If not, we're gonna to have to start again. So we pick away at this stuff, sharp knife, tweezers, and there's the reveal. Oh, and that doesn't look too bad, does it? It's bright and garish right at the moment, but it will get better as we uh, continue with the weathering process. So there's the first side, and we're going to do the other side now. There we are. Before going any further, I'd like to uh, put some color onto the underframe of the car. To do that, we're going to have to detach the car from our stir stick and we're going to have to mask the top. This is household masking tape. This will kill your project. It's horrible stuff. Don't use it. This is hobby masking tape. This is Tamiya's perfect stuff. I pre-cut a piece of newspaper, which I'm going to secure to the car with the hobby masking tape, wrap it around the car, and secure the ends with just general purpose household masking tape. 
After a bit of cutting and folding and taping, the car is ready to be sprayed on the underbody. I decided to try one of the new Vallejo spray cans using the olive drab on the underframe. I didn't quite like the color, although the paint is beautiful. I oversprayed it ever so lightly with Tamiya Gunship Gray and I got a dirty gray-green color, which was the effect I was after. Here's the result. Now it's time to try to tone down some of the bright orange and blue colors that we've been applying to the car and to give it an overall weathered effect. I just picked up some MIG weathering filter products from the local hobby shop. They've just arrived there. They come in a variety of colors. The ones that I chose were called Sun Bleach and General Dust. Uh, great stuff. What you do with this is apply it over the paint in a very thin wash. As I hope you can see, the car, after drying for 45 minutes, is now much duller. Without it having changed the overall tone, it has a general air of being dirty. I'm going to do the rest of the car, and then I'm going to seal it so that it will not uh, dissolve when we put additional effects over the top of it. We come now to the stage where we apply some powdered pastels to the car body to achieve an overall worn appearance. I am using pan pastels, burnt sienna tint, as well as some red oxide. You need a variety of brushes for this process. Apply the first color by dabbing it onto the car, then smoothing and blending using the softer brushes. second color goes over the top and the process repeats. Then most importantly, almost all of the color is removed, leaving behind a subtle hint of dirt and grime. It is easy to leave too much pastel on the model, which will spoil the overall effect. Well, we now have the car to a stage where it's appropriate to start putting decals on. Decals are put on prior to the final weathering coat because the decals themselves are weathered. Just to add complexity to it, some of the lettering on the car, in particular the Take a Break, uh, the name of the community, uh, and uh, some of the other details, were actually applied after the main Alberta logo and the car reporting marks. So they've actually faded at a different rate they are slightly different color if you look carefully at the photos. This is something that you won't get in a mass-produced car where they use all the same color. And I imagine that that was, in fact, the factory spec. So this is what is left of the microscale decal paper. I have already used part of it on another car, but there is enough left over for this project. When I started this project, I said I would make some of my own decals. <clears throat> well, we have had to change that plan. The reason being that we did a dry run, and here you can see the result of the name Fort Saskatchewan printed in yellow ink on clear deco film. You can't see it, can you? No, neither can I. The problem is the yellow ink just doesn't show up on the blue background, having been printed on an inkjet printer. The commercial product is much better. 
After thinking about this for a while, I realized that there are enough letters in the unused city names on the microscale set to cut out individual letters to come up with the Fort Saskatchewan town name. While we don't have an F, we can make one from the P in Panoka, and for the lowercase s, we will combine parts of the numeral 5 to come up with a good approximation. I don't think you need to see what Deckling looks like in any great detail. The car body has had a nice clear gloss coat applied to it to allow the work to proceed smoothly. At this point in the project, we need to fade the decals that were previously applied. After experimentation, I chose to go with the same pan pastel burnt sienna tint powder. It has to be carefully applied with a Q-tip over the lettering that needs to be faded, and any excess must be wiped off. The letter A has turned out quite well. I will now proceed to do the remaining lettering on both sides of the car and then apply another gloss coat over the top before we apply the remaining decals. And there we have the second side. It only takes a few minutes. Uh, in the end, I ended up using a paper towel to remove a great deal of the weathering powder. It basically gets into the pores of the dull coat and that's exactly the effect I'm after. I'm very happy with this result. Having applied the remaining decals and a coat of protective matte finish, we can now move on to the final steps of weathering. It's time now to apply some rust streaks using artist oil paint. The car body panel seams will always show some rust and the roof walk supports also leach rust which runs down the side of the car in streaks. We apply small dots of burnt sienna at the top of the car body and then with a broad brush loaded with turpentine we create vertical streaks. Excess streaks are wiped off and the paint allowed to dry thoroughly at least 24 hours if not longer. We're now in the home stretch. The car is weathered to my satisfaction but it needs two more things to be complete. It needs some graffiti there's a tag on one side of the car and we'll put another, based on one on a similar car, on the other side. And it needs the FRA reflectors, which will be the last thing we put on the car before reassembly. step is to apply the FRA reflectors. This product comes from Smokebox Graphics. These are peel and stick reflectors which simulate the prototype. Just peel, apply, and you're done. While the trucks and couplers were off the car, the wheels and couplers were painted with acrylic burnt sienna to simulate rust, and the trucks were painted raw umber. These are now attached to the car, and that completes the model. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and that perhaps it will inspire you to have a try at weathering a freight car. Mm -hmm.